All right, for this problem, what it's asking us to do, ready? We're ready. For the problem, what it's asking us to do is it wants us to find the inverse. So a couple things you guys need to remember about the inverse. Remember, what we're doing with the inverse is actually our, um, our input or output are actually being switched. So therefore, first thing we want to do is we're going to change our f of x into a y. All right, we're, and because remember, f of x is your output value, we also always refer to our y as our output as well. So the first step you always want to do is just change it back to a y because it's going to, it's going to make our algebra a little bit easier. Uh, remember, if we were getting, you know, graphing it, you know, you have your y-axis, x-axis. Sometimes it just makes it a little bit easier to graph it when you know it's uh, y equals. So then the next thing is, remember, when you're finding the inverse, what actually happens is our x and our y, our domain and our range, are actually um, switched. So therefore, to represent that, I'm going to interchange my x and my y. Then the next step is, well, we still need to find what is the function, you know, what is the value of our function. So therefore, now I'm going to solve for y. So the first thing I need to do is I need to get rid of that fraction. So I'm going to multiply by 5 over 1. The reason why I multiply by 5 over 1 is because now those two 5s cancel out to be 1. So therefore, I'm left with, and then this is just becomes 5x equals y minus 1. Then, yes? Um, if you're like multiplying by the reciprocal, why would you get rid of the y? Where am I getting rid of the y? Like the y minus 1? Uh, well, I didn't get rid of it. Teachers, oh, pardon the interruption. At this time, will you please turn your TV to channel 6 for the Mustang News? I'm multiplying here by 5 over 1. Okay, for now, uh, you get to get, because this. <laughs> Because the fives are going to cancel out. Ladies and gentlemen, shh, guys, please don't put yourself here. The reason why, because five divided by five is what? One. It gives you one, so therefore these cancel out. Shh. So these are going to be canceling out. And I'm going, um, it's the same thing if you have like five thirds. If you multiply by three, those threes cancel out. Right? So here, if I multiply by 5 over 1, these 5s are going to cancel out. So therefore, now I'm left with y minus 1. y minus 1 is equal to x, so now I have to add 1. So therefore, my inverse function, f of x equals 5x plus 1. Or a lot of times, we write it as f inverse of x equals 5x plus 1. So that's my inverse function. Then on the problem it said, well, verify that those are correct. Verify that those functions are inverses of each other. So a verification of that is f of f inverse of x equals x, and f inverse of f of x equals x. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the composition of f and of f inverse, and we're going to go and see if they, when they reduce down to x. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take my um, f inverse, I'm going to plug f inverse in for f of x. So f inverse is 5x plus 1. So if I do this, so I do f of f inverse of x. That's going to tell me to plug in your, plug in your inverse function, which is 5x plus 1. Plug it into this function, which would be minus 1 all over x. I'm sorry, all over 5. And what happens is my 1's cancel out, my 5's reduce down, and so that equals x. So therefore, it works that way. We also need to make sure we check it the other way. f inverse of f of x equals, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in what my f of x function is into my f inverse. So now it's going to be 5 times my f of x, which is x minus 1 over 5 plus 1. Well, here, the 5's cancel out, and then the 1's cancel out. So again, I'm left with x. So therefore, since the composition both equals x, I can verify that I did my um, finding the inverse correctly and that these two are inverses. All right. cool.